everybody, welcome to Hyperspace Hobbies. Ian, oh yeah, he's holding it up. And I've got it too, mmm, yeah. Ooh, that is the stuff right there. It's what dreams are made of. Disgusting. <sighs> it is disgusting, and I <laughs> love it. I love every flippin' minute of it. Hey I everybody, do. I am Space Marine Ian here with my friend Steve. And today is a very special day as we have received the Codex and a bunch of toys that are displayed You're in the background. You're not allowed to take my name. What name? I'm not Steve. I'm Space Marine Ian. Everybody knows me as Space Marine Ian. Give me the book! No! I'll kill you! All right, so uh, we are continuing. First up, we are continuing our subscription drive during this. The Space Marine Tober, as I'm, I'm reclaiming it from Orcs. Orcs cannot have the only Octobers. It Space Marine Tober. We had to firebomb October first. <laughs> yeah, and we then had to rebuild do it and then from rebuild the from the ground up. Yeah. So it's Space Marine Tober, and we are doing a subscription drive here at Hyperspace Hobbies. We really want to grow our community. We really love talking about Warhammer, and uh, we really want to get to three thousand subs. So uh, ever since we started this drive just a little less than a week ago. Uh, we've actually surged up. We got like 100 subs over this last week. And for yeah. a little channel like this, that's a, a, a huge deal. So thank you so much. Yep. And uh, please, if you're watching our videos and you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing, liking, sharing, commenting, and join the conversation um, about, this time, Space Marines. And in the future, anything that we're talking about. All right, enough of that crap. Let's get into the book. Let's get into the book. So last time we talked about the Iron uh, Storm... Iron Storm? They're force? all they're all storm, all storm spearhead or task <laughs> or force. That's all it is. Just a bunch of forces. Yeah. So last time we talked about Iron Storm uh, spearhead. We also talked about the Angel Sea uh, the Anvil Siege Force, so Iron Hands and uh, Imperial Fists. And today we're talking about what the Salamanders get, the Firestorm Assault Force. Yes. Yeah. So this is I, I actually am working on a Salamanders army right now, and if you've seen me at play on tabletop, I played it a couple a couple of times. Um, and you can go and find that. I love it. it just as a, as just a kind of, we haven't even started really talking about the rules yet and such, but so far, I'm a, I'm a big fan of what I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so let's, let's just get right into it. Detachment rule, close range eradication. Ranged weapons equipped by Adeptus Astartes models from your army have the assault ability, and each time an attack is made with such a weapon, Targets a unit within 12 inches, add one to the strength characteristic of that attack. Uh, like, the strength characteristic is, is fantastic. That's undoubtable. It's awesome. But the ability to put assault on any of your units... It's even better. ...is even better. Yeah. That's the most important part of this, I it's feel, incredible. is the assault. Because it allows you to move onto objectives and do actions or move into areas and still do yeah. whatever secondary that you're allowed to do. Because usually it says your unit can forego shooting to do this secondary. Yeah. And if you don't have the option to, you can't. But assault essentially allows you to shoot. Yeah. So you would be foregoing the assault shooting that the Firestorm Assault Force gives you. Exactly. Huge bonuses. And 12 inches away, plus one strength. It's phenomenal. Great. It's really, really good. Yep. I, in particular, something that I really love about this is how well, uh, how well this detachment plays the mission. I think the best keyword on any weapon to have is assault because it gives you more movement and it gives you the ability to take that more movement that you're getting and then still complete actions for secondaries or uh, for abilities or for stratagems, right? Being able to advance with anything and then huck a grenade, for yep. example. Yep. It's phenomenal. All right, so let's jump into some of the enhancements and I particularly enjoy one of the enhancements in here. There are four of them. The first one is Champion of Humanity, a Tacticus model only. While the bearer is leading a unit, models in that unit ignore any or all modifiers to their characteristics and or any role or test for them. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So your OC never drops, essentially, is what I'm hearing. That's the big thing that rings in my ears, is you can fail your Battleshock test and it won't matter your characteristic, your objective control characteristic is not modified. Hmm, yes. I think that's how that functions. I mean, look at the characteristics. Movement, yeah. toughness, saving, wounds. Yeah. OC is on there. Yeah. So your OC and, would never drop. And the, like, your mood, like, there's so much stuff in the game that messes with movement, too. Yep. And, like, there's so many times that you're going to be, like, Oh, I'm minus two to my move, or minus two to my charge, or minus two to my... Nope. 
Absolutely not. It is Tacticus model only, though. Yep. So th that is something that's like basically like Primaris hero that's not in Gravis armor. Right. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, so I mean, like this could be really this could be really good in a bunch of different applications. I'm just interested whether or not this is the choice versus one of the other ones, like War Tempered Artifice. Yep. So Adeptus Astartes Infantry model only. Add three to the strength characteristic of the bearer's melee weapons. Love it. It's good. Yeah. It's good. It's not amazing. But if it's it was good. if it was four, it would be amazing. Yes, because then, then you it would could take go those strength eights to like twelves, and you could like, and you could like reasonably harm, um, like land raiders with them, mm -hmm. right? Where now you go to eleven max, but I mean most vehicles kind of hum around uh, you know toughness nine, toughness ten. And if you've got a if you've got a good like high strength weapon on you like a power fist or a thunder hammer, you're clicking up to like to eleven, 11 yep. which is like a, a good sweet spot number, or uh, something maybe uh, just to like beat up on elite infantry. Let's say you've got like a captain, so space marine, a space marine captain in terminator armor, for mm -hmm, example, mm -hmm. is rocking a relic weapon that's like strength five, right? Right. So now you're strength eight. And now you're going into infantry that are time as four and going, I'm wounding you on twos. Yep. Or you could do like a Crozeris Arcanium. Yeah. And then you have plus one to wound and plus three strength, which means like, yeah. you're really... You're wounding on twos most yeah. of the time. You're, any, everything, everything, the worst you're going to get is a wounding on, on Like threes. threes yeah. Right. It'll never be any... Tough. Yeah. So I, I like that. I just wonder, so, like, even honestly with both of these so far, I have not been, I'm not particularly pumped. No, like neither of these are like, holy crap! It's a bolter discipline, or or like the target augury for uh, it's, Iron it's, Storm. It's also fairly expensive, so I yeah, right. So I don't know, but yeah. so far they've been solid, but not jaw dropping. All right, hopefully forged in battle will drop your jaw. Adeptus Astartes model only, while the bear is leading a unit. Once per turn, after making a hit roll or a saving throw for a model in that unit, you can change the result of that roll to six. This sings out in a couple ways. We just picked up the uh, Company Heroes, which comes with a master crafted heavy bolter. So it is a damage three heavy bolter, but it, the heavy bolter is also sustained hits two. Right. So you could roll to see how many shots that heavy bolter hits with and then change one of the fails to a six, mm -hmm. proccing two more additional hits. That's great. You could also put this in a blade guard squad and just guarantee that you get one of your invuln saves. Because it is change the yes. change the result to a six. Yes, that is, it is solid. You're like, no matter what happens, boom, this guy's staying alive, or oh, I'm about to hit you with a damage three hit from some special weapon, and you're like, no. And it's once per turn. So in your yeah. turn, you, you can do, do you can do the company heroes hits. Switch it to a six, and then on your opponent's your turn, turn, switch a saving throw to a six. Yes, that is. It is solid. Okay. So I like Forged in Battle. I think it, it uh, is an interesting way to kind of swing yeah. both the durability and the damage output of any unit. What's the point cost of it? Uh, now, here in hyperspace, we don't usually like hinge a whole lot on the point costs that are currently typed into the book. All of that is kind of in flux. Yeah. So like what it is right now in the app is actually what the point costs are. That could vary depending on when you're watching this video from what is actually typed in the back of the book. Um, and so, you know. 15 points. Worth it. Absolutely worth it. Because here's what you're going to do. The first time somebody shoots you with something that's going to actually kill someone and you change the damage characteristic to a six, you've made 15 points. Yeah. Yeah. If you go for a trade system like that. It definitely does like save if you it's, points. If it's AP3, it's good. And you just go, oh, wait, no, I'm just going to change that to a six on my armor save. Yeah. The only downside to this is while the bearer is leading a unit. So, what that means is that the second that all those blade guards are actually dead, and yeah. you've got your character left, and you're like, yeah, I can make his. A oh, yeah. I can't. So, it they've done this a lot actually in 10th, where it's like the character's got this, like, what I would call dope ability and then nope it has to be leading a leading unit a unit trigger. yeah so it's only when he's got buddies around does it actually happen and so this is one of those where something like war tempered artifice that we just talked about is active all the time well another one that is only for the model 
Each yeah. time an attack is allocated to the bearer, subtract one from the damage characteristic of that attack. And if the attack was made with a Melta or a Torrent, change all damage characteristics of those weapons to one. Hmm. So you throw it onto a model. This is Adamantine uh, Mantle. You throw it onto a model, they're minus one damage all the time. If they're getting hit with Melta or Torrent, it's one instead of whatever else it is. I mean, it's good. Uh, giving your model, you know, minus one damage is great. Especially, like, let's say, honestly, like, my in my mind, this bad boy goes on to a uh, Gravis Captain, because the Gravis Captain halves all damage coming in. So then you would have, and then minus. Uh, oh, yeah, that's a weird combo. How would that... Well, let's say I, let's say I get hit with a damage four something, I would have, and then minus. Or would you minus? Some... No, yeah, that makes sense. No, you yeah, have you, you have. Right? That's actually ridiculous. Then because yeah. he it makes him very very tough. Basically, the only damage he's like ever gonna actually take is one. Yeah, unless he's up against like a. Uh, Norn emissary or something. Yeah, and he's taking like six, or he takes the like. But even so, like, let's say he even takes the knight's harpoon to the face and takes twelve. Yeah, that right? would become six. Would become, become five. five. And he would live. <laughs> yeah, and he lives. It. Just a joke. Just an absolute <laughs> he joke. He just takes the harpoon to the face see, and can lives. You, can you imagine just looking over and you see your captain with like a freaking phone pole, like? <laughs> in his chest <laughs> let's go guys <laughs> i can take it let's go guys everyone's like this holy crap pool. so something that i would pre like my opinion on these enhancements is these are solid but unlike the gladius task force for example where if you're not running a fire dis like now it's called fire discipline but like so if you're not running fire discipline like what are you doing like right. you just you like it has to go in the list because it's so good and that's the way that it is. Mm. This, honestly, like, looking at what you've got in your army, these could be benched. And I, I wouldn't think that you're silly. Right. You, you're saying you could play just Firestorm Assault Force for the detachment rule and the phenomenal strats. strats gonna get to in just and just skip the enhancements altogether? If you need the points. Yeah. Now, if you get to the end and you're like, oh, I've got an extra 15, 20 points, pick something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But... You know, points are hard in 10th edition because there's no, like, granular things anymore. You can't be like, oh, I'll just give a guy a melt gun You can't do that. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you get to the end and you've got extra points, toss something on there. But if I were you, I wouldn't start by going character, enhancement, and then continuing on. I would that's, do it at the end. That's a, dip, a huge difference between the Firestorm Assault Force and the Iron Storm Spearhead is yeah. the enhancements for the Iron Hands ones Make the are, armor. like... Pick that, build an army around it. Yeah, this is extra, which in is my the opinion. Diff which is a big difference. A I feel difference. like the stratagems, however, are well, fairly yeah, yeah. like build your army around. Yes. So let's let's get into the strats. As we've said before, armor of contempt. We don't need to talk about it. It's in everything. It's good. Here we go. I want to talk about this. Immolation protocols. This is this is so good. Like I, yeah, this is so good. Immolation protocols. It's two command point. Battle tactic stratagem. This is a big deal. Yes. When you're shooting phase. Target. One Adeptus Astartes unit from your army that has not been selected to shoot this phase. Effect. Until the end of the phase, torrent weapons equipped by models in that unit have the devastating wounds ability, which means you don't get saves against them. This almost, I feel, is going to get errated in some way because it's too good. Really? I don't think it's too good. I think it's just great. Like the, Why do you think it's too good? I imagine a captain in Gravis armor with like Flamestorm aggressors and that twin link from the Flamestorm. You're just fishing for devastating wounds and you're going to get a ton of them. Also, like a captain in Immolator squad. Yeah, it's good. It's really good. You're rolling like 10d6. Yeah. And then collecting all those. And this is free because it's a captain. Yeah. Making it, making it cost zero CP, and then you roll 40 dice. Sure. So you're getting, like... Six. A ton. That's six. a lot. It's like six. Not eight. only that, you're getting all those wounds as well. You are getting wounds, yeah. But you. So I would agree that this would, would be too good if old oaths existed. Still. 100%. Yep. Because there is no, like, just blanket, you get to re-roll all your wound rolls. 
this becomes less good. Like fishing for devastating wounds becomes less good because now you're actually like, even if you pick up 40 dice and it's rare, there is a world where you throw it and you've got like a six. With aggressors, it is good because they're twinlinged and you can do the re-rolls and you can fish. Yeah. Right? It's not however, blank and good. However, they're twin linked, but they're less shots. Way less shots, yeah. right? So because you have only six of them, and together it's D6 plus one shots. But, so, I, you know, I, Super good. I think what makes this good is the fact that you can battle tactic it to zero. Yes. That's what makes it truly That's good. That's what makes it, right? like, ridiculously strong. I don't know if I would ever actually spend two CP to do that, unless I really had to. It'd be under certain circumstances. I doubt I would either. Yeah, but yeah. two CP is a lot right now. It's a ch it's steep. Yeah, it's very steep. It's steep. All okay. right, you hit the next one. Emulation protocol is probably one of the top tier things. It's, in the, it's in very the, good yeah. in the codex, but you kind of have to work around it. Uh, the crucible of battle. I love your, this. Your shooting phase or your fight phase. One adeptus Astartes infantry unit from your army that has not been selected to shoot or fight until the end of the phase. Each time a model in your unit makes an attack that targets the closest eligible target, which if you're in combat, it's essentially anything. Uh, add one to the wound roll. Oh, that's good. This is six inches away. So you're already going to be plus one strength because of close range eradication. And now you're plus one wound. Only one CP and battle tactic strategy. Yeah. The, the, the thing that kicks this up to next gear is that it's shooting phase or fight phase. Which is great. Of course, you're going to be within six inches for the fight phase thing. But yeah, you know, it crucible of battle that... The only downside is, that I, and I know this, you know, the detachment wants you to be up within 12, and flamers want you to be up real close. Um, but it does sort of suck that you're like the closest eligible enemy within six inches. Six inches it's very is tight. close. It's very tight, yeah. Like, you are, it, it just, it really makes you put your eggs into this basket where you go, I am getting these aggressors really close, we're flaming, and we're going to charge. That's what's going to happen because right. there's no way you're getting within six inches flaming and then you're going, all right, I'll see you next shooting phase. That's not happening. Like, it's a, it's a, it's a very aggressive form of play style, um, which will sometimes definitely work, but sometimes might not. And I feel like the tools you've been given here, especially in combination with Crucible of Battle, Immolation Protocols, like close range eradication, all of it says, you are going in there and you're going to like it, right? Like Yeah, this one forces forces you in. Forces you in. Yeah. So, and not always is that what you actually want to do, right? Not I always. I mean, if you're getting plus one to wound, you're probably in the better. It's pretty good. You're probably on the better side. But what if it doesn't work, right? What if you get in there and it doesn't work? Like, for example, if you're like, okay, I'm playing uh, against uh, Thousand Sons and you go up to that 10-man Terminator blob and you, like, you give it your all, doesn't work. Oops. Right? That's, that's the game, essentially. That is the, I know work. it's the game. It's just you have no other option with this. It's a must. Yeah, you're you're sticking your chin out. Yeah, yeah. big time. You it, like had, kinda... it had better work. Yeah. yeah. Onslaught of fire. When, your shooting phase, target one Adeptus Astartes unit from your army that disembarked from a transport this turn and has not been selected to shoot with this phase. Effect, until the end of the phase, each time a model in your unit makes a ranged attack that targets the closest eligible target within 12 inches, add one to the hit roll. If one or more enemy models are destroyed as the result of any of those attacks, select one of those destroyed models. That destroyed model's unit must take a Battleshock test. Again, it's, it's getting very up close and personal. Definitely, very personal. Which this is, is good is because you, like, your opponent's gonna be putting their army, you know, you, you wanna steal objectives. You want to get up there. You want to like meet in the mid table. Yeah. Before you lose, essentially table presence. Yeah, exactly. It's getting you there. It definitely does get you there. The downside, so I, I can already feel like anybody who is a huge fan of salamanders, out there is is screaming like, but you don't need to hit roll, because you have flamers. It's all flamers. I know that's what's being yelled at the television right now, um, but there are lots of instances where this is going to be really important. Right, like Devastator Squads. A Devastator Squad coming out of a drop pod. Technically, yeah, drop pod great. is a transport. If you yeah. if you want to get up close and personal, Do you're it. gonna get plus one to, to hit, which yeah. kind of augments the fact that you're only hitting on fours when yeah. you're hitting on threes. Yeah. It's not bad. It's still, I think this is probably the 
It's okay. Yeah, the least effective one. It, it, it is okay. Although, you know, there's another thing you could do with it, too, is, like, what you could do is you could have a big squad of Terminators, like, jump out of a Land Raider or a Repulsor, right? And suddenly you're right there. You got out of a transport. Click it. Now you're hitting on twos, mm -hmm. right? And if you're close enough, it sends Storm Bolters to strength five. That's right. Right? Yeah. Well, it would be because yeah. you'd be within 12. Yeah, you're within 12. So it sends the Storm Bolters to strength five. And then on top of that... You're plus one to hit, right? And then after that, I would imagine they've probably got a captain in there, and the captain in Terminator armor gives them all rerolls to charge, and they just charge in there and kill whatever's left. And then you use Crucible Battle to yeah. give them plus one to wound. And and it's, it's, yeah, it's amazing. Okay, right? okay. It's good. So you just got out of your transport, but things didn't go the way you thought. What are you going to do, Steve? Rapid embarkation. I love, I love this, this I so love much. It. So good. Okay, you take it away. At the end of the phase, fight phase, end of the fight phase, one Adeptes Astartes transport unit from your army that has no models embarked in it, and one Adeptes infantry model from your army that are six inches from that transport. Your infantry model can embark on that transport. Yeah. You cannot target an infantry model that is within engagement range of one or more enemy units, and you cannot normally embark within a transport that you're not allowed to technically embark in. Yeah. Big time. I love it. I love it. This is huge. It's huge. This yeah. with like, because the um, the repulsor has an ability like this already. Yeah, if you get charged, you can hop back into it, which is great. Yeah, it's so you really could good. have. It's really good. You could essentially be immune to charges if you kind of build around being yeah. like, oh, it's phenomenal. End of the fight phase. Yeah, hop back in. It's, it's a really six-inch movement. Is what's really, Yo, really yeah, quite absolutely. strong about it. Right, because you can get in one side and get out the other in the next turn. Yep. <laughs> right, like, and you're talking about. Like transfers that have gigantic, you know, footprints, repulsors, and land raiders, right? And suddenly you're like, oh, like, damn, you're like yeah, getting in and getting out and like saving yourself tons of movement, protecting yourself. It's phenomenal. Especially with like the Terminators getting out, charging something, wiping that thing off the table, yeah. and then being like, you know what we should do? We should get back in that land raider. Yeah. And then they just go, end of the fight phase. Hello, back in the land raider. Yeah. It's great. So if you can get the Land Raider like in a position where the guys can get out, shoot and kill something, and then hop back in, it's and charge strong. with your Land Raider too. Yeah, charge. Yeah, charge with the Land Raider too. It is wholly within, so it's yeah, you, it's, it's tight. A bit of a fancy little it's a yeah, kind of dance play. you're gonna have to do. But like Land Raider charge and Terminators charging. Terminators wipe the squad. Yeah, and then just hop back in and completely yep. ready to do it yep. again next turn. The Land Raider helps with the tank shock. You just tank shock to a bunch of mortals and then... Uh, exactly. Right? Yeah. Like, could it's be awesome. hilarious. Uh, burning Vengeance. This is also very fun. When your opponent's shooting phase, uh, just after an enemy unit has resolved an attack, uh, one Adeptus of Astartes transport from your unit that was selected as a target of one of the attacks, one unit embarked within that transport can disembark as if it were your moving phase and then shoot as if it were your shooting phase and target the enemy that shot the transport. This is the best one of these I've seen. It's awesome. I love it. Yes. Yeah. It's the best one of these I've seen for a couple different reasons. Uh, being able to disembark after this thing has been shot can win you victory points. Yeah, totally. Comfortably. Yeah. Because you could blitz your impulsor up. You know your opponent's going to be shooting at it because you can see what your opponent's playing. Yeah. And then just wait inside. Yeah. Move the impulsor up. Everybody inside still shoots. Yeah. And then... They shoot at it. They, these guys jump out. They shoot again. And it's done. It's great. And to fight face, they jump back in. It's great. I love it. Right? Like Burning Vengeance is awesome. It is really good. This is very transport heavy. There's three different transport stratagems ones. that are transport uh, reliant. You know what? Like I know a fair amount about the lore, but I don't ever recall there being like a salamander's like transport thing like i mean hey half their literally half of their stratagems are all about transport so yeah maybe it is and maybe i've missed that in the lore somewhere or maybe that's something that gw is just firing up right now they just want to do it so what, let let's think about the detachment as a whole let's maybe each try and and pick out a unit from uh let's pick out a unit that exists within the book that we think works really well with this detachment Inferno squads and, and flamer aggressors 
not allowed to choose those. Right, yeah, those guys are auto-includes. Auto, auto you want to, yeah. It, if you're playing this, you start with a six-man pack of Flamer Aggressors and a ten-man a ten -man pack of Infernus Marines, and you do whatever you want with them, but that is exactly what starts in this army. Right. So what, so what else goes? What else happens? I mean, there's so many good things that fit in this. There's tons, It's hard yeah. to pick one. Yeah, it's, it is hard to pick one. I, I would like to see the Land Raider Redeemer more on the battlefield mm -hmm. and uh it's a it's a coincidence that the unit you've chosen can actually go in yeah the land true, yeah. Redeemer. Yeah. um the fact that it's flamestorm cannons are strength six minus two flat two and d it's d6 plus three shots it's very good of which it has two of those it's very so good. it's two d6 plus six shots means that it benefits from a lot of the torrent bonuses that the stratagems give you and it's a transport so it fills out the yeah. other three stratagems that you could potentially yeah. use it also fits pretty much anything it can take any model you have yeah it does and lots of them it it has so many so many bonuses because if you ever overwatch with this thing your opponent's going to be very sad yeah because it's an overwatch beast 100 killer missile 16 wounds with a two up and toughness 12 moves 12 inches you guys can get out and, and charge i think the land raider redeemer is good it's actually not bad for its points either yeah it's very good and i think that centurion devastators are a really great Which choice is like for the this. weirdest thing to say i know loud. it is is the weirdest thing to say out loud but here and you'd think that you'd go assault centurions which are a good choice too really either the centurions are solid because the assault centurions could get out of the land raider yep right after they move, flame a bunch of stuff, yep. and then charge, do a bunch of damage with the drills. That's a great choice. The Devastators I really like because there's a lot, like, often they get a really bad rap because one, like they're very slow. Moving four inches is bad, yep. like, like objectively bad. Um, and then like the weapons are like strong. However, what's awesome about this is that they now all have assault. Right. So like, you can get them jogging around and firing off these awesome weapons. And they're hitting on threes of those weapons where a regular Devastator squad hits on fours. Like mm -hmm. pretty much all the weapons in the Devastator squad profile all hit on fours where these nice. hit on threes. And on top of that, because they have a, what is it called, decimation protocols? That's yeah. right. Decimator pro protocols. They're rerolling ones to hit all the time, which is great. And if they're shooting at something on an objective, which by the way is a great choice, they reroll everything. So you jump out of a land raider. Like, so let's say you move with the land raider, you get out, you shoot everything, and then you spend a CP and jump back inside the land raider at the end of the fight phase. Yep. Hilarious, mm -hmm. right? Or if they're stuck by themselves, now they can go for an actual jog. On average, they're moving seven to eight inches and yeah. shooting all their weapons, no detriments, no nothing, and they're toughness seven with four wounds and a two-up save. And are OC2, which and, is interesting. And they're OC2. Okay. Yeah. Interesting choice. I, I, I like I it. Like it. I, I think you can get a lot of a lot of mileage out of them. So you know, test it out. See what you like. Mm -hmm. All righty. So uh, this concludes our discussion of the Firestorm Assault Force. I like. I feel like this. There's lots. There's lots of options. Great strats. Cool enhancements. A great army rule. And like just so many different ways to play Salamanders or any other kind of uh, chapter that you feel fits into this playstyle. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So from all of us here at Hyperspace Hobbies, this is Space Marine Steve and Space Marine Ian. Damn it! Where do you think the Firestorm Assault Force lands in the big wide ocean of all of these detachments? We've covered the Iron Storm Spearhead and the Anvil Siege Force. And pseudo covered Gladius. And essentially you've covered Gladius. So right now the ranking is Iron Storm right up top right yep. up top. Yep. Underneath that is Anvil Siege Force and then Gladius. With a bit of an asterisk, sometimes those will flip around depending on what's going in your army, but we did Anvil uh, above Gladius. Um, I think that this is above Anvil for sure. You do? I think that this is better than the Anvil Siege Force. Yeah, yep. you get way more movement out of it. The the, the strats are better, in my opinion. Is yeah, it, the enhancements aren't as awesome, but whatever. I feel essentially what makes it, and I, I, I agree, I feel what makes it better is Assault Army-wide. Yeah. Because then anything you play just moves faster. This game is won and lost in the movement phase, yeah. for the most part. And, and the rest of the other phase you win and lose in it 
is kind of the shooting phase. Yeah. And this allows you to do both those things. Yeah. Ups your movement and allows yeah. you to shoot after all you've done all your wacky movements. So I feel First, like it does. It I'm going to go on record here. I think this is better than Anvil than the Iron Storm whatever it is. I think I think it yeah. I think the it's the Iron is. Storm whatever uh, it is, the Iron Hand one. Salamander's better than Iron Hands. Is I think what you're Iron, yeah, I think Salamander's are better than Iron Hands. Yeah. I think that this is probably one of the best ones of the book. I'm putting this one right up top. I know everyone is like, "Oh, Iron Hands are the best ones." Because lethal hits, because sustained, because, 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 because. I think this plays the mission better. I think this gives you better options. I think this is a lot more fun to play. Um, I think this is better. Firestorm Assault Force, the best one in the book so far. Right underneath that, close second. Iron Hand, Spearhead. Uh, it's not even what it's called. Uh, Iron, Iron Storm. Iron, Iron Storm, Spearhead. whatever. Yeah, they're pretty And then Anvil Sea Force Gladius right under that. Yeah. We continue along. Hit that bell button, subscribe, comment. We've got more Space Spring content coming your way real quick. See ya.